Now let's talk about carbohydrate loading. This is my favorite part of the taper. You know, my diet has been, and I'm really proud to say this, um, but it's also not rare. You know, when, when I have to dial in my diet, which my diet is, is pretty dialed in year round, I would say. When I'm not in a prep, I have more flexibility. When I'm in a prep, I'm very structured and very disciplined and very strict with my diet. I haven't had, you know, let's quote it, uh, a cheat meal, if you will, but I haven't had like an unhealthy meal. I guess is the, the best way to put it. This entire prep since early July. I have been dialed with my nutrition this entire prep, which actually isn't something harder for me to do. When I have to dial in my nutrition, uh, it's, it's pretty easy. And I don't, I don't get tempted by different foods. Now, I am looking forward to post-prep having less structure on my diet and being more flexible. Uh, but throughout the entire prep, I've been dialed in my carbohydrate load plan is just as dialed. It's not this free for all, go eat whatever you want. It is very intentional. It is structured. It is planned. Now, carbohydrate loading, it maximizes muscle and liver glycogen stores. So our body will store carbohydrates in the muscles, primarily in the muscles and in the liver as glycogen And these are stored carbohydrates that your body can tap into and break down and utilize during exercise, especially longer distance endurance events. The Ironman distance, like this is ideal. You want your your muscle glycogen topped off and you're probably going to burn through all of it by the end of the race. Now, the thing is that you've probably heard it before. And maybe even when you were younger, I remember when I was younger playing sports, coach would say the night before a game, have a big plate of pasta, you know, load up on pasta, load up on carbs. The night before is too late. You'll still have that circulating glucose and carbohydrate in the system that your body can utilize, but it's not stored as muscle glycogen. We can store more as muscle glycogen than is circulating for, for rapid, readily use. It takes at least 24 hours from the consumption of carbohydrates to digestion and then assimilation. Assimilation is the consumption, digestion, and then storage of carbohydrates in the muscle and in the liver as glycogen, the stored carbohydrate use. So we want to consume those carbohydrates we're going to use for a race, a competition event at least 24 hours prior to. What I like to do is start my carbohydrate loading plan uh, three to four days out. So in this, in this case, it is Thursday. The race is Sunday. I'm going to load today, Thursday, and tomorrow, Friday. Saturday, I'll eat as normal, which is still going to be a lot of carbs, but not 800 grams of carbs. I like to keep Saturday, the day before, a little lighter to re-optimize digestion so that come race day, I'm just feeling good. And, And that's the way that I would approach it. Three to four days out, start your carbohydrate loading plan. And then the day before the race, just eat as normal. You don't have to overdo it. This will ensure that you're topped off on muscle glycogen. You have stored carbohydrates that can be used for the race itself. Now, I believe a lot of people don't consume nearly enough carbs during their carbohydrate loading plan and strategy. It is recommended to consume seven to 10 grams of carbohydrates per kilogram of body weight. Now, if you don't uh, use kilograms, but use pounds, just take 
your weight in pounds divided by 2.2 and then multiply it by a number from seven to 10. And that's how you'll get how many grams of carbs you should consume each day of your carbohydrate loading strategy. So for me, as I've mentioned, these next two days, 800 grams of carbs a day. Saturday, I'll probably consume four to 450, maybe 500 grams of carbs, just depending on how I'm feeling. I can kind of look at myself and, and feel my body to know if I'm, if I'm filled out and topped off on muscle glycogen. Now, this is not just a, a free-for-all. Eat carbs, eat fat, eat protein, just get more calories. And this is not a, a calorie loading plan. This is a carbohydrate loading plan. So what I do is I pull up my fitness pal. I rarely track my food, but I build out my carbohydrate loading plan in my fitness pal so that I have a plan going into these days, knowing exactly what I'm going to eat to make sure I'm hitting the calories and the macronutrients that I want for each one of these days. So carbohydrates are the priority. In this case for me, 800 grams of carbohydrates a day. I'm actually going to reduce protein by a little bit. I'm going to reduce fat and I'm going to reduce dietary fiber. So I'm going to reduce protein and I'm going to reduce dietary fat because what I really am trying to get to in this case is more carbs stored as glycogen. Still want some protein, still want some fats, but it's not the priority uh, for the carbohydrate loading plan. And I don't want calories to be in excess where I just feel disgusting come race day. So in order to keep calories a little bit lower with the increase in carbs, I'm going to pull protein back a little bit. I'm going to pull fats back. And I'm going to reduce dietary fiber intake because you want optimal digestion. I'm not going to eat any veggies from now until the race. I'm going to pull back any kind of carbohydrates or food that causes stomach discomfort, just food sources that I know work really well for me, digest very easy, and I'm not going to have any sort of GI distress or discomfort. And I definitely don't want like 40, 50, 60 grams of fiber where I just feel full and bloated and gassy with the increased amount of carbohydrates. So stick to carbohydrate sources that digest easily, that you know work for you. And you want to test out your carbohydrate loading plan for your big workouts throughout a prep so that come race day, you know exactly what you're going to do. And you've tested it, you tried it, and you know it works. So I like to give a brief overview of what I'm consuming carbohydrate-wise to get to 800 grams. This morning, I had GoBar, G1M Sport. I'm not going to include like the, the, the proteins and the fats that I've consumed, but just the carb sources. I had sourdough toast. I had blueberries, uh, which I'll keep the blueberry intake lower just because of fiber. Orange juice, lots of rice. I'll have four cups of rice today, white rice. Uh, cream of rice, banana, lots of honey. Honey Nut Cheerios, more UNM Sport. It's actually really easy. I don't say easy, but it's much simpler to get to 800 grams of carbs than you, you might think or imagine. It's not that challenging. I could easily eat 1,000 plus grams of carbs. I would just have to be intentional and structured appropriately and make sure those meals are spaced out uh, without causing GI distress and really making sure that my muscle glycogen is fully topped off. Now, something to keep in mind, uh, when it comes to glycogen, Glycogen storage requires about three grams of water per gram of carbohydrate. So when carbohydrates are stored in the muscle as glycogen, it's going to pull some water into the muscle as well, which is a good thing. But you can expect to gain some weight 
during the carbohydrate load. Don't be afraid of that. Uh, do you want to be sitting a little bit heavier because it means that your body is storing the carbohydrates? Naturally, with the water and the carbohydrates, the glycogen, you're going to sit a little heavier. I've helped many people with a carbohydrate load plan. And by the second day of the carbohydrate load, they're texting me saying, hey man, I'm sitting heavier. I feel a little heavier. I don't think this is going to work. I'm scared. And I'm always like, hey, rest assured, trust the process. The day before the race, just eat as normal. Come race day, you're going to feel great. And it happens every time. Second day of the carbohydrate load plan, they feel heavy, they're freaking out. The next day, which is the day prior to the race, they eat as normal. The morning of the race, they wake up feeling filled out and fast and light. And it does make a big difference in your performance. So if you taper well, you recover well, you carbohydrate load correctly, it can make a big difference come race day or competition day. 